Hey everyone, in this video I'll walk through how to set up a minimal C++ project with CMake as the build tool. Uh, before we get started, I want to let you know that I'll be trying something new with my videos moving forward, which will be that I'll record my screen as I type without stopping or restarting the recording. Um, the hope is that this will probably give you more insight into my thought process and how I program in general because you'll be able to see you know, uh, things I type, things I delete, and the uh, pace at which I type. As I mentioned, I'll be using CMake. And at the time of this recording, I had version 3.21 installed. Uh, you can check that by running CMake dash dash version like you see here. And I'll be using Git as I work through this video just to make things easy for myself. And also so that um, I can post a link to the repository at the, in, the, in the description of this video so you can see and copy the exact code that I wrote. I will go ahead and create a directory called source, SRC, and create a C++ file called main.c++ inside of it. And I will fill it with some boilerplates, but uh, really it's just a simple hello world program to make sure that we can compile and run this code. Um, we'll know that it worked correctly if you know we can see hello world printed on the screen, right? Okay, now we can see that we have main.cpp under src directory. Next thing we need to do is create a file called cmakelists.txt, um, which is the one and only file that tells CMake how to build and compile our project. The first thing we'll put in the file is um, CMake minimum required, which just specifies the minimum version of CMake that is required. Um, so it's like saying if you want to use CMake to build this project, um, it should be version 3.21 in this case, or newer, um, but nothing that is older than 3.21. And what this does is uh, it just suppresses warnings when you actually um, build this project, because if you don't have that, um, you'll get a big wall of text that reminds you to uh, put the CMake minimal required at the top of your CMake lists text. Uh, next, we write project cpp with cmake. Um, this is just giving a name to our project, um, not that important. Next, we write set cmake cxx standard 14. Um, it's just saying that we want to use the C14 standard when compiling our C code. Um, you can make this 11, 17, 20, whatever you want, really. And just to make sure that this is enforced, uh, we're going to set CMake CXX standard required uh, to true. And next, we're going to set CMake uh, flags, which specifies the compiler flags that should be used when compiling this project. And I chose to use um, the dash 03, which enables all compiler optimizations and the uh, w all which enables lots of warnings so that we can catch potential mistakes at compile time rather than runtime. Next we write file glob space cpp source and then a pattern. Um, this is a way to specify all the non-header files so dot cpp files that should be compiled. Um, we're using what's called globbing to specify a lot of files at once um, this is so that we don't have to write each file uh, one at a time in this file. So you'll notice that we use an asterisk, um, and this is exactly identical to uh, using an asterisk on the command line in bash. And the uh, project source deer that you see um, wrapped in curly braces and a dollar sign, that is like a built-in variable that uh, gets expanded to the directory that contains the CMake lists text file, this file. It's like the root of the project. And we use that instead of hard coding it to make this file more portable and work in um, even when you change the name of the project. So this pattern here says include all the .cpp files under the src directory. So that means files like source underscore main.cpp. But because of how asterisks and globbing works, um, this does not work for files like um, source underscore d underscore f dot cpp. Um, like notice that f dot cpp is inside of a directory that is yet in the source directory. Um, asterisk only works for a single level of hierarchy. So if you want to work with files like source 
um, slash d slash f dot cpp, you have to add another pattern like this. So the second pattern says that we want to include all the CPP files that are under any directory that is under SRC. So in other words, um, we want to include all files that are two levels deep inside of the SRC directory. Um, the first pattern would only look for files that are one level deep. So this second pattern allows us to handle files like source slash d slash f dot cpp, but not source slash main dot cpp. Next, we're gonna have uh, the include underscore directories, uh, which essentially lets the compiler know where to look for header files. Um, so header files, you know, as we know, are handled a little differently from cpp files. So that's why we have this separate command to um, let the CMake know that um, the SRC directory is where the header files are located. And lastly, we're going to add um, this add underscore executable main CPP source, which tells CMake that we want the resulting executable to be called main, and it should be created using the C++ files specified by the uh, variable CPP underscore source. So remember that the CPP underscore source uh, uses globbing to specify lots of files that need to be compiled. So this variable actually represents a set of files, not just one file. And that's it. So I'm going to commit all these changes. I've made this far to git. So now that we have the CMake list.txt, um, we're going to actually make use of it. We're going to call CMake with one argument, which is the path to this file. So we just write cmake, cmake lists.txt. And since there are no warnings or anything like that, it seems like it worked. So what did that command just do? So you'll see that um, some files were generated. Um, I'm going to add these files to the git ignore file because these are files and directories that get generated um, every time you run CMake, and you don't really need to keep track of these. Um, you can just regenerate them. So now I'm going to commit the changes that I made to gitignore. Now, the one file that I think is you know, probably the most important here is the make file. Um, this make file is what will allow us to actually build our project. So you can think of CMake as actually a tool that allows us to specify how to compile our C++ project using very high level commands and descriptions that we wrote into the CMake lists.txt. And CMake automatically generates these make files that does the actual work of compiling our project. And now that we have a plain old make file, we can just run make. And you can see that we've built the main.cpp and we built main, which is our executable. So we can see that main was created. Now we'll try running this executable by doing dot slash main, and you can see it printed the hello world from our main.cpp. So everything we've done up to here, I would consider the minimal set of instructions to get CMake up and running for a single C++ file. Um, now we're going to take things just one step further and make sure that we set up CMake really correctly. I'm going to try creating a header file and a corresponding implementation file in CPP um, and try to use that header from the main.cpp. Um, I just want to make sure that we can still compile the project properly even when there are multiple files and a header file involved. So let's go to main.cpp and let's imagine that we have a library called arithmetic. Uh, which has a static function called add that takes two integers as input and returns the sum of those two integers as another integer. So um, I'm just adding a printing line here to make sure that when we run the code, we can verify that this worked correctly. Okay, so let's try uh, creating these files under SRC directory. Um, so now the directory looks like this. So we'll start by uh, filling out the header first. So pragma ones uh, for header files, we're gonna declare the class and we want a public static method that adds two ints. Like I said, just return the sum. Um, 
So now we're going to implement this from the C++ file by first including the header file we just created and making sure that the method names are correct. Um, like I said, we just want to return the sum uh, in this method. So now we go back to the main.cpp and try to include the header. Now, if we did everything right, we should be able to build this and run the executable as uh, we have already done. Um, we run make and something is wrong. Uh, so the linker can't find symbol, blah, blah, blah. So I actually forgot what caused this issue uh, at the time of the recording until I remembered that you can't just run make. Um, when you create or remove files, you need to run CMake first to generate the make file. And then you run make with the new make file. Um, if you do that, then it works. Um, I just forgot about that when I was recording this. So like I said, run CMake again with our CMake lists uh, dot text and run make. Now um, build passed. So now if we run the executable um, by running dot slash main, uh, we can see that everything works as expected because we're seeing that one plus two equals three, which means that we are able to successfully use the arithmetic um, header file. Okay, so now we got through all the important stuff, but I just wanted to show you uh, two things, uh, two more things before ending the video. The uh, first thing is that make only compiles things if there has been a change in the source code. So if you run make and then run make again without making any source code changes, then nothing will really happen because everything is already compiled and you don't need any new um, generated files. So what if something is wrong and you need to forcefully compile um, your source code again? Um, you can run make clean, which basically removes all the intermediate files and artifacts so that when you run make, um, it thinks that everything needs to be built uh, once again. And lastly, um, if you run make, your source files get compiled actually one file at a time, one after another. And this can get pretty time consuming if you have a lot of files to compile in your project. So what you can do is run um, make-j. So um, if we go to the main page and look for this option, um, it says, if the dash j option is given without an argument, make will not limit the number of jobs that can run simultaneously. So this basically means that if you run uh, make with dash j and don't provide anything, it means that your source code will be compiled in parallel um, and that will massively speed up your compilation time if you have a computer with uh, several cores. So my tip is always run make-j unless you have reasons not to. Um, you can kind of see that the first and second line got printed at roughly the same time when I ran make-j instead of the first line printing and then the second line printing um, some time after. Uh, and that's kind of showing that both files uh, started compiling around the same time. Um, and that's it for our first CMake walkthrough. Um, I hope you found this helpful. And let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section. Thank you.